following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verana Media Network. Hi everyone and welcome to an episode of Gen X Vice. I speak to you on pressing and set up the youth of Sri Lanka. Now today we bring to you a rather an interesting and a very trending hyped up topic in our country. Next to me now is the 1996 Cricket World Cup which is a significant highlight of bringing this sport to an excelled amount of hype and trend in our country. So today we thought we'd speak to you on the current underway undergoing the Lanka Premier League. Now I'm sure most of you all are supporting your favourite team and ensuring that they come to victory. So to speak to some topic we have the Chief Organiser and Vice President of the Lanka Premier League Mr. Ravin Vikram. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Sir, we'd like to know first how, what exactly is going on with the LPL right now. So, we started now, we finished almost three matches right now. What is the current process of the Lanka Premier League? How has it been so far? Uh, it was a successful uh, event uh, last year because we started the first edition in 2020, played in Hambantota. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's basically under the blessing of the Sri Lankan government. Otherwise, we wouldn't have done that Definitely. in the first place. Uh, because of epidemic and all those barriers where they are in place so uh, but we managed to host a, a, a successful event uh, then after this is the second uh, edition and I'm happy everything is going smoothly mm -hmm. uh, but even then today that we are facing a little bit of a uh, crisis because of the South African ha spike virus, exactly. Uh, yeah, new spike on uh, South African region and the players, uh, uh, especially they wanted to go home and settle, and some of the players were prevented coming here because the borders are closed. Uh, so those are the barriers that uh, we are facing right now, but we are managing well. Mm -hmm. And again, I must thank uh, Honorable Sports Minister Nama Rajapaksha. He was behind us, he was guiding us, and the Executive Committee and the President Shami Silva. Uh, they had a lot of courage to stand uh, alone mm -hmm. and giving the opportunity for all Lankan players. That's great, that's great. Now, taking it a bit back, uh, Mr. Ravi, now I spoke to a few youth and we got some research as to what exactly they would like to know about the Lanka Premier League. So, a key question that most of them also wanted to know was what exactly was the purpose of the Lanka Premier League and why did you all initiate this uh, amazing <coughs> Premier League in Sri Lanka? Okay, uh, going back to the history, uh, because now if you take IPL, it is mm -hmm. they are going on the 13th year. Right. And we wanted to start a franchise league domestically. And 2012, we started at then uh, administration, but uh, it failed miserably after one year. Mm -hmm. They couldn't continue that uh, due to various, various re reasons. Uh, then when we came into the administration, we thought of having this and uh, because that will boost the players' economy, sports economy of the country and that will give uh, immense possible the opportunities for young players who are playing in club cricket the domestic seasons mm -hmm. and they are uh, performing but they don't have from there they don't have a pathway to the national side so we thought of having this and that is why uh, this was started again with a uh, uh, new name like LPL uh, because it was formerly SLPL mm -hmm. and we started with LPL and we got five uh, teams initially because we have super centers in four areas that is Gaul, Dambulla, Kandy and Colombo. Those are the super centers and uh, we add Kandy. Uh, uh, so, right. uh, Jaffna, sorry. Then uh, from there onwards we, uh, we thought of having players who are excelled in school cricket and also the club level. That's amazing. 
and the best example is Vyas Kant last yes. year, mm -hmm. who came to the limelight uh, with Jeffna T. Exactly, yeah. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, I think, it is an example for any youngsters that's true. who wanted to play club cricket, then they have a path exactly. to play in the domestic, the Premier League, then they can basically catch uh, the eyes of selectors. Definitely, that's, I think that's a great purpose as well. Also, I'd like to mention, we are at the Cricket Museum today, so make sure you catch some of the great monuments that we have achieved and also succumbed to with the in cricketing, cricketing arena. So make sure we are planning on giving you all a small tour as well while we conduct an interview, so make sure you all make the best use out of, out of it. So, Mr. Ravin, also I'd like to ask you my next question now is, speaking to us on the teams that are playing this year, I think we have five squads playing this year as well. What exactly were the changes we have seen from last year with this year in the current teams? How are the squads that are playing and are they up to their performance as opposed to the last season? Okay, uh, let me explain. The, we had a draft on the 9th of uh, October, mm -hmm. November rather, and we invited all 26 clubs right. to nominate 20 players each. Okay. Right? We have 26 first class clubs. Uh, then we gave uh, the contracted players, we had domestic contracted players uh, who are being paid monthly by SLC. Mm -hmm. There are about 80 players and uh, the central contracted players who are national players who becomes into that category. Uh, so uh, we basically, I think uh, we got about 520 domestic players okay. registered with us on That's our great. platform and from the s shareholders like clubs. And we got 678 foreign players mm -hmm. who wanted to play LPL. So that I alone, see. it has shown the, the entire world that they are very, very interested in taking part at LPA. Yeah. Definitely. That's a great response see, for internationally as well then, definitely. Exactly. I think there were a few changes that were made to the teams uh, since last season, right? I think we made a few name changes and such. Could you maybe brief us on this year's season with the current names and teams that we have? This okay, year? I think from the last year, only uh, Gaul Gladiators mm -hmm. uh, retained their uh, ownership. ownership. Others, mm, for the reasons uh, known to IPG, who is the event right holder. Okay. Uh, and they have terminated their contracts. So uh, that, of course, SSC has nothing to do with that. Yeah. Unless, uh, if it is unfair uh, termination, then we will interfere. But other than that, if it is a valid reason that IPG will, IPG has given, so we will have to accept it. That's perfect. Now, speaking to you on the team that are playing this year, I think uh, this year we have the Columbus Stars, captained by Dananjay De Silva, Dambula Giants, captained by Dasun Shanaka. Gaur Gadi is captained by Banu Rajapaksha, Jeff Nakin is captained by Tisara Pereira and Candy Warrior is captained by Angelo Pereira. What do you think of the squads playing uh, this year, um, Mr. Rami? I think we have some, do we have any new players playing this year and uh, do, or do we have any experienced star players who also be involved in the squads? How has their performance exactly excelled from the last year's season? Okay, uh, as I told you, there were uh, some barriers. Now, Duplessis, he wanted to come and play. Okay. But at the last moment, uh, because of this South African uh, variant, he wanted to get back to his family. And uh, today we are facing uh, Roman Powell and uh, Devon Thomas. They are being called for national duty and they will be leaving soon. And David Weiser, uh, David Weiser from South Africa, his wife uh, got infected with COVID and he I is see. also leaving. Okay. So, but we are replacing uh, them with good players and most probably for Candy, Ravi Vopara and uh, Andrew Fletcher uh, mm -hmm. will join in them. I haven't had any clue from uh, Colombo team who will be the replacement for David right. Reza. Uh, but anyway, we have Imran Tahir on board and yeah. Shoaib Malik is joining Jaffna team uh, tomorrow. Okay. Uh, then Wahab Riaz is there. I see. And uh, especially there is a guy called uh, Noor, uh, who is from Afghanistan. He's a mm -hmm. 17-year-old boy okay, uh, nice. who is playing for God. Uh, there are immense talent in this squad of 22 players sure. uh, that is young and old. And there are some old people we can see, like Upul old in the sense they are uh, 30s, mid-30s, Upul Taranga, then TM Sampath. Mm -hmm. 
even Tisara and all of them are 34, exactly. so 34, 35. Uh, I think it's a mix of uh, okay. ages and the mix of players That's and uh, they will fight the battle alone. That's great. And what do you think of the local youngsters? Do we have any local new youngsters who are taking on the reins <coughs> this year? It is, you can't say new because our system uh, basically uh, boasts of uh, getting youngsters from the age of 15 years. We have okay. a filtering system mm -hmm. where all those youngsters who play for districts and the provincial uh, level, then they will come to the national, uh, they will come to the national level mm -hmm. uh, recognition. So what happened is here, uh, we have a segment in the sense category of some of the youth emerging players. Every team has under 23, two players. Okay. So for that, those categories, uh, all who played, all the players who played for Sri Lanka under 19, uh, they are in there. Like right. for um, say, for an example, Jahan Daniel who played for Sri Lanka under 19, mm -hmm. he is in one team. Then uh, Shiran Fernando who went to uh, World Cup. He is in one team, so I can't remember exactly who are the 10 players, but I can say it is there under the significant among them. Yes. Also, Mr. Ravi, you mentioned that only Gold Gladiators retained their ownership with the last year's season. Could you help uh, clarify the situation to us as to who are the new owners that we see on board uh, with this season? And does this, does this shift in ownership influence the players in any way? What do you think, Mr. Ravi? Yes, uh, sort of. But the shifting of play, shifting of owners, mm -hmm will affect if it happens only after the draft. Okay. Otherwise, if it is before draft, then the new owner will select their teams. And there is no place guarantee for players. Anyway, it is a franchise league where everyone wants the best team. Exactly. So they come to the draft, they select their best players. Uh, coming back to the oh, new owners, I'm very happy as an entity mm -hmm. Sri Lanka cricket because we have now us two Sri Lankan, uh, three rather three uh, Sri Lankan owners. That is Dambulla, it's a partnership with Sri Lankan businessmen. Uh, then Laika Mobile, uh, they have taken Jaffna and Softlogic has taken Kalambu. I see. Right. Uh, so I'm very happy because Sri Lankan counterparts are coming and exactly. coming to support. And yeah. supporting their own local team. Exactly. So I mean, if we could maybe shift to this uh, amazing monument here, the 2014 T20 World Cup. Yeah. I'm sure this museum has some key monuments that all Sri Lankan supporting fans would love to be here and witness. And it's, it's a great initiative done by the government as well to exhibit all these monuments like this. Mr. Rabin, as the chief organizer and the vice president of the LPL, how has your role been so far? Has it been quite an excruciating role of getting this whole Premier League in process and underway? Uh, hectic <laughs> Definitely. and stressful. Uh, because every day something drop up, I will yeah. have to basically uh, sort that out because franchises always expect the solution yeah. from our our side. Okay. So we can't uh, basically say no to them because they are paying their they are paying their paying their money towards this. So they wanted the favorable reply always, but there are some things that we can't. Exactly. I have always have we so we will have to compromise. So it has been hectic, but I'm actually I'm very happy. I'm coping up with the situation, mm -hmm. and it's a challenge for me. But I'm happy. I'm, I'm sure. doing my work. That's great to hear. And I'm sure cricket has been most of like a religion as opposed to some supporting fans in Sri Lanka. So I'm sure we all owe a great amount of respect to you as well in getting this whole Premier League underway. With that now, we're now moving on to a short commercial break. Stay tuned for more on this rather trending and interesting topic. Welcome back to the episode of Gen Exposure, speaking to you on the current Lanka Premier League. And to speak with you on the topic, we have the Chief Organizer and Vice President of Lanka Premier League, Mr. Rabin Vikram Ratna. Sir, we'd like to know now, I think, um, with so many players involved in this year's season, what exactly are the benefits that they are witnessing in being a part of the Lanka Premier League? Okay. Uh, basically, if you take 
all five teams, there are 22 Scott players. Yeah. And uh, this, all, it's about altogether 100 and 110 players. Yes. And 110, play, 110 players are being paid by the franchise owners. And just approximately they are paying about 500, more than 500 million for players' okay. salaries. So that is a huge thing as far as the cricketers are concerned because uh, they don't get that much of money playing in domestic seasons. Uh, and also the other thing is that they get the international exposure. Yes. And after LPL, there were a few guys who uh, were given the opportunity to play in CPL, BPL, mm -hmm. and also PSL and Abu Dhabi T10. Right. So likewise, they basically look at this platform and where they can grab a few youngsters and the talented players for their leagues. So uh, it created the market mm -hmm. for domestic players. I see. So also now speaking with regard to last year's season of LPL, do we see anything different in comparison to last year's season with this year's uh, LPL season? Uh, almost it is the same, but mm -hmm. only thing is that we didn't have eliminator round right. uh, for the finals. Last year it was uh, straight away uh, semi-finals, two semi-finals and the final. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, this year we will be giving uh, the opportunity even for even you lose uh, one match at the semi-final stage that they go into the eliminator round and uh, last year we played 23 matches all together and mm -hmm. with the elimination round uh, we are increasing it to 24 matches. I see, that's amazing. Now Mr. Ravin, you also mentioned how the LPL is definitely providing some great benefits for players involved. So also I'm sure it's great to say that the LPL has also been a great stepping stone for young cricketers to come up and showcase their talents and skills. So how exactly, do you, or do you have any plans, Mr. Ravin, in expanding your reach to youth and making sure even those, uh, even youth coming from these low-income families or rural communities, how do you plan on expanding your reach to these youth in these uh, vulnerable communities and marginalized communities out there and getting their talents and skills to the Lanka Premier League? Uh, well, uh, we have a school system where mm -hmm. 320 schools are playing in uh, division uh, uh, the under 19 right. and uh, from those schools the young products are always coming uh, every year annually uh, they are joining various clubs in the area all that if they do well in that uh, club tournament uh, they will have a chance of becoming the district uh, becoming in the cell, becoming a member of district squads and then to provincial squads. And if you're an outstanding player, of course, you will come and join uh, one of the 26 clubs who are playing in Division 1 I in Colombo. So uh, from there onwards, uh, there is a pathway you can just uh, walk in with your commitment. And then showcase your talents there as well. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully. So as, oh, now I think already being involved in the LPL itself is a great opportunity. But also I think one key significant um, aspect is all the international players who are involved in the LPL. I think playing alongside them is also a great opportunity for most young, budding and aspiring cricketers. Could we know who are the international players playing this year and what countries they represent and what are the achievements that these international players have under their belt as well? Uh, there are, because uh, every team has six foreign players. Okay. So altogether there are 30 players mm -hmm. and they are coming from South Africa, Australia, then Afghanistan, Pakistan. Uh, West Indies. Mm -hmm. So all those guys are playing along with our players That's and cool. it is a uh, very good experience for youngsters who are basically practicing with them then on the field they yeah. fight mm -hmm. and they know they get to know their stat the tactical part. Yeah. So all those things uh, you will not be able to grasp when you are playing just for your club. But this is an ideal platform for them to learn and how to manage the situations, how to right. face those crises in there. So that's a big thing as far as the cricketers are concerned. Though. Any specific uh, names to mention, Mr. Rabin? Of course, uh, Imran Tahir is there, then Shoaib Malik. <laughs> he has been playing right along, I, I think, about 10 to 15 right. years of Pakistan cricket. Exactly. More, than, more than, I think, yeah, more than that. 
and they carry a lot of experience along with them and some uh, Afghanistan uh, players like mm -hmm. uh, then Anwar Ali, then uh, Najibullah Sardan. Yeah. All those guys have uh, quite uh, experience and record uh, quite a good record in T20s worldwide. And also maybe, um, so are we also speaking to some youth as well and identifying what they would like to know about the Lanka Premier League. Most of them wanted to know how exactly did the selection process take place? What are the current, uh, what are the procedures that you all do in the current selection process for the Lanka Premier League? Okay, it is there, it is um, basically I must say there is um, no selection criteria right. as far as the teams are concerned. Because okay. when you buy, when you are the, you are the owner mm -hmm. of that particular team, you buy the team. And there are salary slabs was given, determined okay. by SSC. And you will go for the best players after consultation with the coaching staff and uh, whoever, the uh, other players, other people concerned. Then they will, at the draft, they will pick mm -hmm. according to their category and the salary slab, they will pick, okay, I want A, I want B. Yeah. So likewise, it is not an auction, it is a draft. I see. Okay, that's quite interesting to find out as well. And I'm sure we also have key national players who are also involved in the Lanka Premier League. How has their commitment been towards, uh, towards developing the Lanka Premier League? Have, we, have they shown a great commitment and passion towards the, uh, their, in, their national league? Of course, yes. They are, they are very passionate. Mm -hmm. They wanted this to continue okay. because they know uh, the young people, young players, basically, they are benefiting along with the seniors. And uh, it is financial aspect yeah. that they are concerned and also they wanted, why they wanted to continue is every country must have a domestic league mm -hmm. to participate and along with foreign players, they share experience, then they get a chance to go abroad, play their, in their leagues, so they, uh, it's a friendship and it's a bond that they mm -hmm. will develop. Exactly. So all those things matter to them. I see. And also speaking with the recent matches that took place, I think uh, Gore Gladiators with Jaffna Kings was triumphed by Gore Gladiators. And second match which was played by Dumbledore Giants and Kangri Warriors, which was triumphed by the Dumbledore Giants. How exactly did these matches go by, uh, Mr. Rabin? Were they up to standards? Oh yeah, I should say yes. Uh, it was basically they fought hard. I see. And in cricket, it's a winner and the loser anyway. Definitely. Uh, the best team on that particular day uh they win i see any uh, do you have any favorite team that you are supporting or, or is it I something that you have. can't disclose yes. i don't have i have a favorite one uh -huh. in the sense that is cricket all oh, right that's <laughs> not exactly. at any i cricket. think you're basically the one who's overlooking all teams uh, yeah. being, being involved then also i think uh, with the current being in this year 2021 i think one significant um, aspect that has changed this year's proceedings also in the previous year was the COVID-19 pandemic. How exactly has this pandemic significantly impacted the Lanka Premier League and even in cricket in general, Mr. Rabi? We'd like to know your perspective on this. Oh, well, uh, I think it is uh, because we were not used to that type of epidemic and the biosecure bubbles, a lot of restrictions and the players are being confined to their rooms. Uh, because as cricketers, they would like to go uh, about, say, to the um, bar areas and after matches and all that. They wanted to move freely, but it was basically limited yeah. and confined to your rooms. And it is uh, it is a mental agony for players, some exactly. of the players. And it was better this year because last year the that the 14 days isolation is mandatory for anyone. Okay. So they were basically locked into the room mm -hmm. in that hotel and the, even the hotel staff were vaccinated and they were basically, uh, everyone will have to go through a PCR test uh, after every five years. So there is a lot of protocol to mm -hmm. be followed right. and still even when you come to the grounds, that is a PMO area, is a biosecure bubble, no one okay. can enter that bubble. Uh -huh. So, um, but it is, you will have to go on with that and uh, the 
I think the game should be continued. Definitely. Then how exactly has training been taken place, uh, Mr. Robin, with this year's Premier League? Yeah, uh, training, of course, we have given them the training schedule and okay. uh, we are not mixing the uh, players mm -hmm. uh, because since they are in the BSB, right. uh, so one team practices, then they leave out, then we sanitize everywhere, then mm -hmm. again the second team come and start their practices, so nice. likewise. That's great to hear. Also, Mr. Ravin, I think now uh, moving on with uh, speaking on the Lanka Premier League, how has the international response been with the Lanka Premier League? Have, have, you, have you created a uh, favourable response from the international crowd? Uh, yes, I think about uh, yesterday it was uh, like 300, mi 300 million uh, watch, so that's a uh, Huge response. response. I think we have quite some fans supporting uh, Ireland um, across the globe as well. Yeah. Then how exactly would you rate our Premier League in comparison to all other Premier Leagues globally, uh, Mr. Ravin? Are we um, developing quite in a quite a good pace? Yeah, of would course. You so. say? Uh, I can claim one of the it it will become mm -hmm. one of the best, maybe say three out of one. Definitely. Uh, we will become one of the best. Yeah. Uh, league in the world because it is a, a fair platform for every cricketer because we don't have any political barriers uh, here any player come and play if you take Pakistani players they don't play in India Indian right. players they don't go anywhere yeah. but here is a platform here is a country where anyone can come and play their game I see that's great I think speaking on that point per se Mr. Ravi Cricket itself as a sport has brought, has brought individuals from different nationalities, cultures, religions, different races where they eventually come together on the field and they play their hearts out and they bond with each one another. We'd like to know what is your perspective on the, on the, rather the fostering of different nationalities that cricket provides if, they are, if players who are involved. What is your perspective on this and how do you feel exactly about this, Mr. Ravi? No, I think it's a game where the game is concerned, it will unite everyone, every race. Right. Even in Sri Lanka, uh, this is like a religion. And everyone is supporting Sri Lanka team when they are playing against any country. Exactly. Whether it is um, Singhala, Tamil, Muslims or Burgers, whoever. Uh, they unite as a Sri Lankan, the entire mm -hmm. country they support. So I think it is the harmony that we can bring through sports. Exactly. I think that's some key words that Mr. Ravi mentioned there as well. With that, we're now moving on to another commercial break. Stay tuned for more on this topic. Welcome back everyone. On today's show, we are speaking about the Lanka Premier League. Now, earlier on in the episode, we spoke about the purpose of the LP LPL and we spoke about the performance of players who have taken place, who have taken part in this year's season and last year's season. And we also spoke about the new things we are witnessing in this year's Lanka Premier League and also obviously how the COVID-19 has affected Sri Lankan players in terms of participating in this year's Lanka Premier League. Now, Mr. Ravin, also I'd like to ask you, this might be rather uh, a new question to you, but I'd like to know your perspective on it as well. Now, we have seen our national female players doing exceptionally well in the international arena. I'm sure we've seen it recently as well. They have brought some amazing achievements to Sri Lanka through their performances. I'd like to ask from, I'm not sure if it has been implemented in other countries as well, but do we see any hopes of maybe expanding the reach of LPL to female cricket players, uh, Mr. Ravin? Yes, uh, it is in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, we are thinking and we are discussing internally. I see. Uh, and it will be most probably not T20, but mm -hmm. it can be T10. Right. Uh, simultaneously with T10 uh, men's. I see. So, uh, still we haven't finalized anything, but we have thought about it. I think that's great to know that it's in the pipeline as well. Yes. What do you think of the female players per se, um, maybe the local female players? Do we see any aspiring talents coming through? Uh, that area as well? Sorry. Yes. Uh, there are, the thing is not like male, uh, we have limited number of uh, girls teams right. in the island. 
and we in fact about two months back uh, we went to talent search program mm -hmm. uh, right throughout the country and we picked 20 players okay. from various parts of the island and I'm happy to state that uh, we have found mm, one from uh, Vallabhaya, uh, then Trinko, two from Jaffna, Polonnaruwa and we had 20 players and they were basically contracted as the development players mm -hmm. and uh, we are giving them monthly uh, retainer okay. uh, just to fulfill their needs or uh, whatever I coming see. in their way. Uh, that's great to hear Mr. Ravan. I'm sure it's glad to know that there are opportunities increasing for males and females as well in the cricketing arena in Sri Lanka. How, Mr. Rabin, I think um, one thing you may see is also some form of restriction coming from the youth as a po in being involved in sports per se in general. How could you encourage more youth to be involved in sports such as cricket or even other sports that would require them to be much more committed as opposed to the current lifestyle and trend we see in youth today where there's a lack of commitment in, some, in a sport or in education and such. How would you encourage them, Mr. Ravin? Uh, well, uh, this is basically, uh, this will create the glamour, mm -hmm. the reputation yeah. and mm, this will basically teach you how to uh, decide, uh, decide in fact like situation, in a crisis mm -hmm. situation, manage the crisis situation, all those things can be learned from uh, the game of cricket Definitely. and I think not only that, your economical status of your families have been uh, basically you can I think improve much improve more. Improve much more to the level that you can't think. Yeah. So you must value this game and it is not the money. This game gives you everything, the courage, facing challenges, yeah. a lot of things and the discipline. So with the discipline, the commitment, uh, all those things mm -hmm. will make you a right person who will represent the con for the country and uh, becoming a, a world famous. Definitely, eventually. I think that's a great uh, encouragement words from Mr. Ravin himself. I think also now speaking with regard to, you mentioned about the glamour of the Lanka Premier League, Mr. Ravin. I think from your point of view, you've, you've engaged with many stakeholders across the island as well. How exactly has the Lanka Premier League influenced youth in Sri Lanka? Of course, I think uh, it is. It is like festival, mm -hmm. right? It is a cricketing festival happening yes. in Sri Lanka every year. And uh, basically, uh, it, NLB, uh, they launch their uh, new product to their ranks, naming LPL T20 lottery. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, likewise, I can see a lot of people are following LPA and the LPA property is there for them to associate with and they will take advantage of this entire league. Exactly. I think that's some great news to hear as well, Mr. Ravi. Now, you who have been involved in the sports arena for quite a number of, for a numerous amount of years now, I think, I think due to some cultural barriers, you have witnessed that there has been a discouragement from the elders towards their children or youth participating in sports or pursuing a career in sports per se. How could you maybe address this cultural barrier, Mr. Ravin, and what do you think, how could you advocate for more youth and for, for more parents exactly promoting their kids to pursue a career in sports? Uh, well, it's a two-way thing. Uh, when I uh, see the youngsters who are under 13, under 15, mm -hmm. lot of parents want uh, them to play for their school, come to uh, district squads and all that. Right. But at a certain age, like 16, 17, they tend to think that no, our children should study. Mm -hmm. Even I had the same problem when yeah. I was playing cricket, but somehow yeah. I won uh, the <laughs> battle with my mom. Uh, but that is the thinking line and they wanted uh, their children to become doctors, engineers and yeah. high yeah. professional, high qualified professional. But there are few exceptional that they wanted to pursue the career at mm -hmm. pursue the career as sportsman. That is because they see the value of a sportsman 
and being representing the country is the biggest thing that you can achieve. You exactly. can be a professional, but representing the country is something that I cannot be matched yeah, with any professions there. Then so. also, I think how would you maybe in, uh, influence on balancing your work and life as a po in being in being a professional in the cricketing arena? What are the best tips or advice you could give to current youths who are looking to pursue a career in sports? How could they best balance their lifestyles if they are being involved in the sporting arena as a career? Discipline and the commitment mm -hmm. and the time management more than anything else. Yeah. Because if you practice, you can sleep that you are tired, then you will not continue your studies, then next day morning you come. So you will have to balance the life right. with time management. Exactly. I think recently also we saw uh, Mr. Mahal Jayawardhana, where he was consulting the national team and he decided to take a break and go back to his family uh, as opposed to being more, much more involved in the national cricket team. What do you think of that, uh, Mr. Ravin? Do you think that was the sensible decision that he took with regard to the current yeah, of situation? Of course, everyone has a personal life. Exactly. So we can't, uh, I mean, it, we can't talk about it. That is, uh, everyone, we will have to respect everyone's idea. Definitely. Because he joins as a consultant to the team, he uh, volunteered. So I think it's a great job, but he had done during the, the qualifying round. Exactly. I think then that's what came. really yes. boosted our team performance as well in the T20 World yeah, Cup that was recent right. took place. So do we have, do you see any future plans for the Lanka Premier League, uh, Mr. Ravi? I think now we've just, uh, we're in a second season right now. I'm sure we're looking forward to much more interesting achievements coming up with the coming years. Yeah, uh, we will have to uh, consider all uh, facts. Uh, in the sense whether we are going to increase it to num the number six team or as uh, we have to uh, confirm with only five teams. Mm -hmm. So those are the things and uh, to be discussed internally. Uh, but we wanted now for the next season three, we wanted to get the best possible foreign players to the country. Okay. The only thing is you must understand everywhere now in the world that they are having uh, their own leagues and also because of the two years that uh, we were stopped by pandemic, mm -hmm. the future tour planner that is bilateral tours okay. between countries, that is happening frequently mm -hmm. because we will have to catch up the loss uh, period. So that is why uh, it is a very, very tight schedule. Definitely. True. I think also you mentioned, Mr. Ravin, that where you want more international players to be involved in this year's Premier League. We spoke earlier on the international response that we have received and I think it's quite overwhelming as well. What about the support that we have received, even financially or even morally as well? Has there been a good international support towards the Lanka Premier League? In which way? In terms of finance or even with regard to morally uplifting <coughs> the players, even international players just maybe giving out a few shout-outs or tweets per se. How has the international support been towards the Lanka Premier it was, League? It was good. Uh, only thing is that uh, we are not directly dealing with the uh, foreign participants because mm -hmm. it is up to their franchises. Yeah. So they basically boost their own franchise yes. teams. Uh, exactly. So that happens. But by doing that, I think LPL will get the immense exposure. Definitely. I think that's great to hopefully you can hope for the best with that as yeah. well. I think one key thing that most youth would also like to know is we in Sri Lanka itself, we have quite a few legends in the game who are currently or retired right now and pursuing their own lifestyles. Do we see them being involved with this year's uh, Premier League? Mm, Any not, key uh, mention that you'd like to mention? No, not uh, really. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. really, but old, uh, like old cricketers, the former cricketers rather. Uh, they are involved in various teams in uh, different capacities. Uh, so in time to come, other people will come and join. Hopefully, they and contribute their experience. That's something we like to look forward to as well. With yeah. the with the the participation of so many legends as well, I think it would maybe encourage more youth to be involved in the process and to support their favorite teams out there. Also, um, I think we also mainly mentioned exactly what would what's some of the advice that you could give to you to be more involved in the sport of cricket. Uh, being a professional in the arena for almost how many years now, Mr. Ravin, would you mention? In the cricket administration, about 20, 21 years. So I'm sure you've got a key amount of experience that no one else could match. So I'm sure most of our aspiring youth who would like to become cricketing professionals 
would like to hear some key words of advice from you. Uh, well, it is about sports or cricket. I think uh, maybe to talk about sports per se it would be cricket, much more. Cricket, okay. Uh, I think, okay, I'm more familiar with cricket. Definitely, yeah. And it's a sport. Exactly. And you basically, uh, although you are born as a single individual, you play the team. Uh, you play as a team member. Mm -hmm. Always you, uh, your lifestyle changes to a team team man. So that will take you to the heights of your life. Right. Because if you are if you are a team person, you always respect others. Exactly. And uh, that will create the basically the respect from others, and you will win that. Uh, if not, if you are a selfish in the game of uh, cricket, I don't think that you can achieve great heights. Definitely. I think we are also coming up to the last few minutes of our show as well, uh, Mr. Ravin. So speaking with regard to the um, current Premier League, uh, Mr. Ravin, are there any key players who we would like to mention who we should look out for and maybe be much more engaged in with this year's Premier League? Oh, well, uh, there are plenty of young and budding cricketers. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether they will have a chance to play for their teams, but uh, selectors, they are coming for every match and watching them very closely. And there are young talents, like I don't want to mention names because then it becomes biased. Bias. I see, yeah. I see. Now, I think sure, then we quite have quite a number of players who we can look forward to in this just Premier League. So, just my final question to you, Mr. Ravin, is we see cricket as a sport has a special significance in comparison to other sports in Sri Lanka. We see special attention from males, females, children and youth when it comes to cricket in our country. How exactly has this special attention come to the cricketing sport? I'm not saying it's a bad thing at all. I think um, I myself am a key supporter of cricket sport as well. But how exactly has this special attention and significance come to cricketing in our country? Even though our national sport is volleyball, we see a much more response, engagement and attention when it comes to the cricketing game. What do you think led to this, uh, this culture in our country, Mr. Ravi? I think throughout the years, uh, I think we, Sri Lanka cricket established in 1948. 19. Uh, and throughout those years, the administrators, cricketers, they worked together as a team and we won our test status in 1982. Okay. Yes. Then uh, from there, the entire nation was happy that we obtained test status. That's a big thing. Because right. even in Olympics or any other game, mm -hmm. you haven't achieved that status. Like it is a big thing that you, it's like getting a doctorate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we became the, the test membership country, uh, test member country, then we started our journey from there, uh, the serious journey, because we have been playing before 19, say, before 1982, we have been playing. Playing, exactly. A very good cricket, but we didn't have that status quo. But now, after 1982, and with along with our spectators, the general public, all are rallying round with Sri Lanka team, and we came this journey in a hard way. It is not an easy way, and a lot of players sacrifice their fam families, everything basically, in the same early era of 1982 to 85, 87. And after winning the World Cup, only that interest uh, was taken to the super high, exactly. high. And now, of course, it has become a religion. That's Everyone true. wants to become the greats, like other our like our own Sanajaya, Surya, Aravind, Kuma. Mm -hmm. The small kids, they wanted to exactly. play like them. I see. So it's definitely a much of a positive influence towards our culture as a country then. With that, we've now come to the end of our show, Mr. Ravin. Thank you very much for joining us in today's segment of Gen XYZ. So thank you to our audience as well for joining in. We hope that you all may have learned quite a lot with this year's Lanka Premier League and what to look forward to in terms of um, this year's Premier League. So also if you have missed out on our show, we hope you will catch us on our youtube.com channel in English. So make sure you all join in next week as well for more topics related to the youth of Sri Lanka. Till then, stay safe and take care.